due diligence and the inspection request. You all know the due diligence repair request document, right? Is everyone familiar with that? Yes, I'm just gonna assume everyone's familiar with due diligence repair requests. All right, so let's go. This is my favorite little thing to talk about. So you go on a due diligence repair request. And I know some of you, I know this is going to get some of you. So you get the due diligence repair request. And you know what I'm talking about. They, they were going to refer it to the, um, uh, the inspection report and everything like that. And so they get the due diligence repair request. Um, and so uh, you write up due diligence repair request. You know, sometimes they want to become, you know, they want to get their inner attorney out of them. And they write things like, Per advantage inspection report done on the 31st of March 2020, 10 a.m., the following summary report attached detailing items 1 through 39, see list below. And so then they start listing up. Oh, you're going to love this, you're right? You're going to love this. But then they start listing, they start listing down below. And they're going, all right, y'all know this, Roman numeral one. They got Roman numeral one there. And they got, you know, items number two, four, you know, six, eight, who do we appreciate? And then they got, uh, you know, four, Roman numeral five on there, you know, one, three, four. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And so they have, uh, they've got this sitting up there. And what does this refer to? Tim, what do they got, what are they referring it to? Well, you interpret that. They're referring to items off the... Uh the inspection report that they want completed. Right, y'all got the inspection report. You know, the one that your client just did, you know, said, yeah, go ahead and send them an inspection report. And you said, you gave the whole legal, you know, your inner attorney said, you'll know, see blah, blah, blah. And you list off items one, item Roman numeral one, right? Because that's, that's more important, Roman numeral one. And then the subgroups, two, four, six, eight. He went through. And so you, as the buyer's agent, like, yeah, Steve. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go ahead and put that down, and I'm just referencing, I'm referencing what that uh, inspection report is. I, s I smell a lazy agent. <laughs> well, you, you're on to you're on to, you're on to some hound dog, and so so then so then you want the listing agent to then go into the report and look at room number one, number two, number two, and it's uh, kitchen sink. Leaking faucet, and then it'll say something like, um, uh, "Seek uh, further evaluation from a licensed plumber." Does it ever say, Tim? Does it? I haven't read a report yet, probably in five years, where an inspector, an inspector actually says how to repair it. Do, have you? No, I've never seen anything where it says take licensed plumber to remove O-ring, reset. Purge, air, replace. Exactly. Oh. No, no inspector is going out there, right? They don't break the liability issue or whatever for them. So, no, it's always further evaluate. And for some reason, there's going to be a licensee. There's got to be a license for everybody, right? Crack concrete. Seek license professional. You know, you know license concrete thing you got to get to pour concrete. Is there such a? There's, there's not. So, here it is. They put this on here and they just reference it. And you're having them reference something that actually doesn't have a solution to. Do we have a question? Anyone got a question? Bueller? Laura, has a question. Laura? what's Laura got? Laura interrupted my flow. Come on, girl. Come on. She's asking if you put the item number in the description and ask for the repair. Is that okay? Uh, so you already see. Laura's already ahead of it. She already knows what's going. Yeah. Where I'm going with this. So. She's on it. Thanks, Laura. Thanks for the question on this. So just repair it. Well, what are you asking to be repaired? Laura, what, what is it that you're asking? You're just saying reference number two. And thanks, thanks, Laura. Uh, reference number two and repair it. Well, it says it's a leaking thing. So, so let's just take it to common sense. Y'all are you're in business together. So is the, the buyer wants the most expensive thing done and the seller wants the least expensive thing done? That's just habit. That's not, you know, in every particular case. So what's the seller going to do? What, what, if, what if the seller said, fine, I'm just going to shut off the water? Did they just repair that? What do you think, Tim? A little too much gray in there for me. That's a little too much? 
And, and once the buyer said, well, hold it, that leaking O-ring, I expected them to put an, an entire new faucet system in there for another $225. Lord, that's where this gray area that, that we're talking about happens with this particular repair request. And why this is problematic. Because someone signs off on this. I'm going to tell you, Lord, and, and folks, I'm going to have, I'll have my seller sign off on this. I'm like, all right, we'll do it. And then you're going to come to close, and you're going to come in, you're going to do your walkthrough and your closing, and you're going to say, Steve, why is all this stuff not done? And I'm going to be like, what did we have done? What, what didn't we do? And you're going to be like, Steve, I referenced room numeral four, number one. I'm going to say, so? We referenced it, we further evaluated it, and we said, nothing needs to be done. Next, we go down to room numeral four, three. We, we reevaluated and said, nothing's got to be done. So did we... Tim, what do you think? Did we take care of our obligation? Well, to the letter, yeah, we sure did. And so, so this is where it becomes problematic, guys, on it. And one of the reasons why, at least with Home Coach, that I, I'm always talking about going down and referencing the money, that if we can avoid going to a due diligence repair request, I'm going to show you something that's going to blow my mind away in a second on here, but why we should try and work out dollars. Much simpler for us to be able to go and say, let's negotiate $3,000 for all these there's $3,500 versus going through this because this does not necessarily solve all the issues on it. And it makes you like an attorney in trying to draft things. And I want to go, I'm going to flip uh, through to page 45. And this is one of the things, guys, in this entire book that I think should send out a huge warning flag as an agent to you. I already told you things about the Real Estate Commission where they want to talk in some kind of vague terms, right? Kind of because, you know, they just want to be able to have an open tent to everybody that's out there in order to, in order to scoop you up if they need be. So then we've got, we've got down to the bottom of page 45. I want you to read this. Look at this. It talks about, for example, specific language should be used as to which repairs are requested and who will complete the repairs. All right, that sounds pretty good. All right, I can do this. I want you to look at this last line. Brokers are also encouraged to seek the advice of an attorney if needed when completing a repair agreement request. Y'all, no one is playing around. If you want to think about complaints being up, if, if, you, if the buyer was expecting A and the seller was expecting Z, we're going to have a problem and someone is going to lose. And worse, both are going to lose. You're going to have a buyer who's pissed off. You're going to have a seller who's pissed off. And when, at the end of the day, they're going to fill out a complaint and say to you, you stink. You didn't represent me well. Or what? You know what? I want you to pay for the repairs. I want you to take care of this. You said it would be done. That seller didn't do it. I can't, if I can't hold that seller accountable to it, if I contact an attorney as, an, as a, as a uh, principal and that attorney says you ain't got nothing, you ain't got nothing to go sue them on, then I'm going to come to you, the firm, I'm going to come to you, the agent, but someone is going to repair the way you told me it was going to be done. And here's, here's the warning shot, y'all. That's what's in this book. Every year the commission's putting this out and it's a warning shot across your bow. This thing here, I think, is one of the most important things in this book, as I said, and I want to repeat it one more time. Brokers are also encouraged to seek the advice of an attorney if needed when completing a repair request agreement. They are saying, y'all, if you want to go this route, you better get someone else to think about writing that up. Don't think of yourself and your inner attorney and bringing that out of you. Go seek the advice of a professional at that. And at the end of the day, you're all like, what, Steve? I'm not going to go and get an attorney. I'm not going to, I mean, how much am I going to pay for the attorney? Is the buyer going to pay for the attorney? That's a good question. It's a valid question to think about. It's something you're going to have to employ into your business model. It's, it's, it's a new level where we're going with if you want to go this route. And like the thing that's encouraging to, you to consider at least is consider about using the dollars. It's always cleaner, right? If we can just, if we can agree, and yeah, there's gonna be some negotiating back and forth, there, you know, my estimate says 3,000, my estimate says 2,000, okay, right. But when you agree to it, 
right? Then you go to um, an amendment to contract and you simply say, okay, maybe it's going to be the $3,000 allowing that the lender approves it, you know, $3,000 in closing costs, uh, maybe it's a reduction in price, but at least then it's, it, it's dollars. That's all it is. It's done. We don't have to have any gray matter as Tim, you were relating to. Jess, there's a question. Sure, sure, it's right. So that, great question, Kelly, is that, yeah, of course, ask any of the attorney, right, you can ask an attorney, ask someone else if they'll do it. Now, I mean, I'm not the closing attorneys, I can't speak on behalf of it. It doesn't mean that they have to do it um, on it. They might have a charge to do it on it. But I think um, what I'm at least want you to do from this point today forward is investigate how your company wants to move forward with this particular, what's being suggested here. And then also find out venues for yourself. Call and talk to your closing attorney. Ask them how they want to handle this particular venue. If you want to do this route, if this is the route that you want to do that.